you know, everybody loves your neighborhood teacher, but no one wants to pony up to pay us a salary where we can survive. Well, if teaching were easy, we wouldn't have a shortage, right? It is a symptom of the sick and fractured system of education. I think I always had it in me to become a teacher, but I never wanted teacher pay. We're underfunded, we have less resources, we're kind of expected to give up of our time. We're expected to go the, the extra mile all the time without being asked even if I can. You know, I think that it's as important to guide students through an education as it is to help someone in the hospital who's sick or uphold the law in a courtroom. There is a, um, a certain amount of demonization of teachers that goes on, knowing how hard we work and knowing what, what's actually happening in a classroom. It's hard to hear people put down your profession. In somebody's class is the next bioscientist. In somebody's class is the next discoverer. It's so important that we renegotiate what we think about teachers. I would say on a national level, there's too much politics involved in public education. Um, there's too much money tied to policies and ideas about what education should be and how education should happen. Um, there's not a lot of um, actual educators in that conversation, which I find extremely problematic. If you look at the education system, the highest need students usually have the lowest, smallest amount of resources. It is difficult, especially when you teach in communities of color um, or low-income communities. They bring a lot of trauma into the room. If you have students arriving every day and their minds are elsewhere, they don't know where they're going to sleep at night, they're cold, they're hungry, their stomachs are growling. Across the board, generally, like, they're not going to thrive. I think when you talk to teachers, the thing that we're most frustrated with in regards to our kids is the amount of testing that they have to go through. We are testing children to death, and we're testing teachers to death. 20 years ago, we might have spent as much as two weeks testing. Today, in 2015, the average number of weeks a child spends taking tests can be up to six weeks. And it just seems like a reoccurring theme. It's just happening over and over again. Let's try a new test. Let's try new standards. Let's mandate them. Let's see what happens. We've been putting band-aids and we've been trying to backtrack and replace parts. Why don't we look at a way to create a more holistic education, which includes social emotional content and curriculum? the best part? Where do I begin? Oh, the kids, right? The students, the young adults, it's, uh, they're the best part of the job. I wouldn't give it up for the world. It's, it's the best choice I ever made was to be a, to be an eighth grade English teacher. For every teacher, it's when you see that spark, when you see a student engage, they're doing something that they love and they're good at it and they feel confident. They feel like they found their place in the world. That's my favorite part. The teacher I worked for kind of mentored me. I know he thought that I could be a, a good teacher, but you know, he was wrong. I'm not a good teacher, I'm a great teacher. <laughs> the person sitting in that room is teaching to our future, is teaching to the hope of a nation, is teaching to the, the potential of a world. Might we value that more as a society? Might we value that more?